going to be allowed to go back to school. And uh, that's the gist of it. Well, one thing they'd never tell you, and I'm not sure what the laws are like in Florida, is that there are exemption forms. They're usually, they're, I think there's a religious exemption in all but two states, and I think those are uh, Mississippi and West Virginia. And then you have conscientious objection. And a lot of other states, there, there are a few that don't allow that, but most states do allow a religious exemption. In fact, uh, mother just won a legal battle to refuse vaccine for her child made of aborted baby parts. And this is out of Life News. Um, a New York woman has won a legal battle to refuse a vaccine for her child because it was made from aborted baby parts. The vaccine MMR for measles, mumps, and rubella are required by New York City schools for enrollment. However, the woman was granted the exemption on religious grounds because she opposes abortion and the vaccine uh, used from tissue collected from them. So there's an activist post article that ties in with that aborted fetal cells in products and vaccines. And if you go click, uh, go through a few pages of it, it lists the vaccines and who makes them. And MMR2, measles, mumps, and rubella from Merck, right there, the uh, chicken pox, uh, Verifax, the chicken pox. Uh, uh, vaccine there the polio vaccine hepatitis a so it's all in there and all these are made they're called they call it diploid cells that's their code word for it but they take these aborted baby cells and that's how they grow this type of media uh, medium to make the vaccines so uh thank you for your story matthew we're going to go to mankind in arizona how are you doing today doing all right rob uh can you hear me i can hear you loud and clear go ahead all right, cool, cool. Yeah, first I just wanted to say, um, you know, it's kind of like an aha moment. Uh, I just want to make two points, and then I'll let you keep rolling with the show. But uh, the first aha moment, um, this this whole situation with the, the Farrakhan, you know, leading the, uh, you know, Million Man March again in October and stuff like that, people need to keep an eye on that uh, because that, mixed with the the information that Trump is now putting out as far as for, you know, Obama being the head and basically being the front runner for ISIS, which are, you know, Muslim, um, you know, not not saying anything against the religion, but that's everything put together, it's, it's almost like a no-brainer what's about to happen next. So I just kind of want everybody to keep their eyes open on what... Um, you know, the Million Man March was going to happen in October. And um, the last thing that I wanted to say was as far as for with the vaccine, um, I'm actually, I used to, it's kind of a hard story to tell because I actually used to be, you know, uh, I worked for a pediatrician. And, you know, you get into the job for the right reasons to help mm -hmm. these kids and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I used to give shots to the kids thinking that that it would help them you know and because they tell you that they're safe and effective they ground that into your head safe and effective safe and effective don't they right yeah. and and after a while i actually started to see the same thing i was because you know it's a pediatrician's office you see the same kids coming in uh, and i started noticing that whole situation to where it's like they're their lights look like they got put out from taking the vaccines and the mothers would come back in and ask me, Hey, you know, um, you know, ever since the, uh, they got their shots and you know, this and that happened or whatever, um, sometimes they would have seizures or they would say, they're just not, they haven't really been the same. They've been violently sick and blah, blah, blah. And they would actually start asking me because they didn't really trust even what the doctors were telling them at that point. And it was at that point that I actually took some of the inserts from the vaccines, read the whole thing myself, and there's a million words on there. But yeah. I found that exact same situation where it's like, it says right here that it's not helping. It's not helping you at all. It's, it's, it's almost like a trial. And I actually ended up having to quit my job because literally morally I couldn't take it anymore. It was either get get paid or continue and continue to hurt kids or you know, and I, I, I had to take the alternative. I had to quit. Yeah, and we and played I no a, longer a, work. We played a portion of an interview um that David Knight did talking with a nurse who 
admitted that they knew they were giving preemie babies the vaccine, the regular vaccine schedule, and they knew these kids were going to be hurt. So they were getting the intubators ready so they could help them breathe when they stopped breathing. These things literally kill you and they have to put the intubator in so the kids don't die. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, it, it takes great courage to step away from that. But people need to start speaking out because if you look at the vaccine schedule from where it was when people like you and I were born compared to now, it's almost triple, quadruple of what they were giving kids back then. And, you know, I know plenty of people my age now that have allergies and this and that. And that's where all this stuff comes from. When the brain gets attacked, it goes into defense mode. And defense mode can come in any forms. In fact, if you guys can roll the video of, of the girls in uh, Columbia um, writhing on the floor after their uh, HPV shot. I mean, this is what happens. And the only reason we see it here on a mass scale is because they're doing this all at school. And so all these girls are having the reaction at the same time. In your case... It's happening on a case-by-case -case basis, so parents aren't seeing the connection. And these people, I had one of our uh, interns was translating this. They don't know, they're like, we don't know what's going on. We need help. We need help. And you're, the reason they're not getting help is because the establishment, Big Pharma, knows that these are side effects to their vaccines, and they let it happen. So thank you for your call, mankind. Buck, what is your vaccine story? Well, I've got a four-year-old granddaughter. Uh, and uh, at about a year and a half, uh, this is before I knew of any of the dangers of vaccines. You know, I had no clue until I started to listen to, to Dr. Tim Penny, and I kind of just kind of went down a rabbit hole and found this information. Uh, but at a year and a half, uh, we our granddaughter came over to our house two days after she'd had her vaccination, and it was like the light had gone out of her eyes. She had a, a blank stare on her face. She wasn't the same. I looked at my wife and I said, what's the matter with her? You know, we couldn't figure it out. So I ended up going to the pediatrician uh, after I'd done some research with my daughter. And the pediatrician just lambasted me, you know, for even being there and even, even questioning. How dare uh, you question us? trying to ask a question. Yeah, yeah exactly. We go to school for this, man. Ugh. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But here's here's another point. You know, and then that that article about the uh, the Mexican, they said that one in ten thousand has the gene. Yeah. Well, if it's one in ten thousand, how many people were in that room that happened to be one? It was way above. It. What was it? One in ten, not one in ten thousand. Right. It's you not the gene. That That's just an excuse they give you to say you're predisposed to have seizures after you get a vaccine. It's okay. You'll be fine once the seizure passes. That's their that's their cover story. Now, my son just had a baby uh, six months ago. Mm -hmm. He's been totally unvaccinated, and he is the bright. I mean, you can just look in his eyes and just see the sparkle and see the the joy and, and see the the wonderment that he has. You know, everything. It's, it's amazing. A, it's a totally different yeah. story. Now, thank good thank goodness that my four year old granddaughter, whose name is Harmony, um, uh, and Thankfully, uh, you know, she is she is harmony. I mean, in a true sense. Uh, thank goodness that she didn't fall susceptible to that Russian roulette of vaccinations. Yeah. Because how many people do? You know, a lot so, of people do. That's uh, sad. You know, uh, both of them now are, are totally off vaccines. They're totally healthy. And thank God that, that they didn't uh, suffer any any truly adverse now, who knows, you know, five years, 10 years down the road, uh, maybe my granddaughter who, who did have the, the vaccine, you know, I had no idea. I saw him. I, I was there and I saw him vaccinate my 12 hours. She wasn't even three hours old when they gave her the hep B vaccine. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, just, it, just, it just blows my mind. So it was, was the, the three-hour-old uh, three baby, were, were they using intravenous drugs? Were they having anal sex? I mean, that's why you get the Hep B vaccine if you're leading that kind of lifestyle and you believe that it actually works. But you don't get it. You don't give it to babies who aren't practicing that. But they do that to cover the nurses who might have Hep B. It's, it's disgusting. They're more concerned with how their outlook appears and, and, and instead of the real the children's health. That's not what they're concerned with. They're concerned with the bottom line. We're going to be back with more of your calls, and I'm going to just show you how they lie to you about now they want pregnant women to take the whooping cough vaccine. It's the InfoWars.com Alex Jones Show. This is Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Duke. Stay tuned.
That's right. We are live and we are taking as many of your phone calls as we can at this point with your vaccine stories. How have you been impacted in your life by vaccines? Because that's what it all comes down to. What is the final interaction? How do we get this message out to people? How do we let them know that these things aren't safe and effective like they like to beat it over your head over and over again? Um, here's an article that came out. Prominent vaccine denier site applauds Trump for saying vaccines can cause autism. And I believe the, it looks like the, artic uh, the article came out of Natural News and Think Progress was trying to, uh, he's already secured the racist vote. Now Donald Trump is saying vac swaying vaccine truthers. So you can tell where their head is lying. They want to have, they believe in herd immunity. That's what their problem is. Now, last night on the uh, InfoWars Nightly News, which airs every night, 7 p.m. Central, you can find it here on InfoWars.com. You can find it at PrisonPlanet.tv. And then we also put it out on YouTube after it airs live here. But uh, Darren, Darren McBreen found a actual Gardasil ad that uh, it's about 30 seconds long. And, you know, I'll, I'll just, this is actually the truth. This is what they should be saying about Gardasil. So uh, here's that ad. Gardasil, destroying little girls' lives one injection at a time. And now boys, too, can get the Gardasil shot. My stepson, 10 months ago, had the HPV immunization and a week later went blind in his left eye. Yeah, uh, they can't wait to give it to boys. May cause convulsions, grand mal seizures, deafness, circulatory collapse, blood problems, leading to unexplained bruising or bleeding, fainting or brief loss of consciousness, Chronic fatigue syndrome, foaming at the mouth, blindness, and death. Gardasil. There you go. And they want to now mandate that in Rhode Island. Um, they actually are trying to put that on, and you can only get out of it without a, with a religious exemption. And I'm going to play a bit of a video uh, of, of a parent confronting the health director in Rhode Island. I'm going to play that coming up probably in the next segment. Um, but first, let's go back to your calls. Joseph in Michigan, what is your vaccine story? Hey, and thanks for having me on. Um, I'm I'm kind of getting notified about this last minute. Um, calling about uh, vaccine injured children. Sure. Yeah. My sister Lauren, 31 years old, 1984. She was four months old. She got her first DTP shot. About half hour, 45 minutes later, she went into a 15 minute long grand mal seizure. My sister has cerebral palsy epilepsy and autism from the DTP shot. That started me being a conspiracy theorist 31 years ago. I've had a long time to study and do a lot of research. I, I researched the ethyl mercury and how it bonds to the membrane on the mitochondrial DNA and how it permeates and saturates and gets inside of that membrane to permeate the cell and then switches to a methyl mercury, which is like 10 times more toxic and it starts confusing the caspase 3, 7, and 10, which are your biological time clock for your RNA DNA transfer, and it confuses everything about your development. Mm -hmm. And when the aluminum, aluminum hydroxide attaches to the red blood cell and, and coats it to the point where it cannot transfer ATPs to energy anymore, and also the same thing with the, uh, the DNA transfer, it cripples the child immediately. And in, in going, going through the research, and doing all these links with the uh, polysorbate 80 and the MSGs and the formaldehydes and what they do to the immuno, uh, immune, immune system, the SIDS, that they've been talking bullshit now for these last, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little, a little elevated. We'll bleep that but out. They've, they, they, um, they've been denying it. They said back in the 80s, oh, flip your child over onto their belly because if they're, or onto their back, because if they're on their belly, they're suffocating, you know? Right. But that was when they started putting the ethyl mercury into the vaccine. And the children that were dying of SIDS, they knew why then, and they know why now. SIDS now is at its highest rate in history. And so is but the vaccine schedule. What, what, what a coincidence. The vaccine schedule is the highest in history. SIDS is highest in history. We have the worst infant mortality in the developed world, you know? they did was they changed the ICD code so that they don't use SIDS anymore. Right. They put uh, lack of respiratory, uh, stop breathing, uh, other. They don't say SIDS anymore. So SIDS, you know, supposedly has gone down, but it's actually, it's worse. But when I looked at it, when the ethyl mercury gets in there and it starts confusing 
the caspase 3, 7, and 10, those trigger a cellular apoptosis that goes after neuronal cells,